Hey guys, Kirill from SkyDrones here. Welcome to Hong Kong. So this is the third podcast about the latest trends and technologies in the UAV industry. Today, I would like to speak about the communication. And by communication, I mean how drone being out in the air interacts with the operator on the ground. So first of all, there are several types of data being sent back and forth, and let's have a look at each of them. One of them is manual control. So normally you have RC radio on the ground, RC receiver on the airborne side, and this forms a standalone radio link to control the aircraft. Primarily, frequency for such systems is 2.4 GHz, and the range is a few kilometers. Of course, if you speak about compliant regulations, and don't take super long range systems into consideration. So the second link is telemetry data channel. Normally, this is lower update rate link, which includes all major information downlink from the vehicle, like status, position, speed, altitude, and etc., and uplink for high-level commands to the drone, like takeoff, land, mode change, as well as mission upload for autonomous flights. Standard radio systems usually operate at 433 MHz or 915 MHz. It depends on the country on local regulations. The range is again just a few kilometers, and main disadvantage of such radio systems is very limited bandwidth, actually just a few kilobytes per second. And as you can guess, it doesn't allow to transmit anything really valuable. For instance, images or information being captured with a payload in real time. The third sublink is real-time video feed from the drone. People tend to use analog video transmitters. Depending on the output power, you can get pretty good range. However, on the ground side, you need to have analog monitor. This comes as a separate screen, and you need to have it along with your laptop or tablet. Of course, you can have a video in the GCS app on your laptop or tablet, but you will have to use USB video capture device to convert analog stream to digital. And, as you can guess, the quality of 480 lines of analog video is just nothing compared to high-definition video. So now let's count. We ended up having three completely different and independent systems. Integration is very far from ideal, and we have a mess of cables, additional weight, higher power consumption, and most likely problems with electromagnetic interference, which is always a pain. And now you might want to ask yourself a question. Why not to combine all this three together? Well, that really makes sense. And DJI actually already did it a few years ago and created Lightbridge. This is the one of the reasons which makes their products so much more advanced and so popular compared to the others. However, good news, this technology is becoming more available now. Just imagine just one compact onboard module to which you can connect everything, like multiple cameras, payload, etc. And it will do all broadband long range communication. Same compact module is on the ground, which you can just plug into your computer and instantly get control, telemetry, and video all in one app. So do stay tuned for more updates from Sky Drones. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.